What is up guys, Gronk here for part 2 of episode 2 of Monday Night Raw for my WWE 13 Universe Mode. This match is a number 1 contendership match for Daniel Bryan's Intercontinental Championship. I don't know if the winner will have a title shot next Monday on Raw or at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view in a few weeks. Uh, which, let me know in the comment section which you guys would prefer, a title shot on Raw or a title shot at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. So, before I talk about this match, I did a Money in the Bank review in part 1 of the Monday Night Raw episode 2 video, but I didn't really preview Monday Night Raw. So, the Monday Night Raw 5 point preview from WWE.com says, Will Team Road Scholars' bonds of friendship begin to fray? I think so. I think the reason that Damian Sandow threw Rhodes off the top of the ladder when Rhodes was about to win was so that the two could feud before Damian Sandow cashes in his Money in the Bank contract, which he, which he won in that match. Two, will Mark Henry make a play for the WWE title, or will a new challenger like Rob Van Dam step up? Uh, I don't really think Henry has a, a, an excuse to really challenge again. He lost last night, he tapped out, and as I said in part one of this Monday Night Raw episode, I said, like, I don't get why they had him tap out. I mean, that's, when you tap out, you give up, and Henry should not have g given up, because it, this was his whole thing, like, trying to be a beat a real champion to validate his career, and all that. So by tapping out, I think he just kind of threw away everything he's been talking about the past few weeks. But I don't think Henry's in a challenge for the WWE title again. I don't even know if Henry's... Well, I don't think he's going to retire, but I don't think he... I think his time in WWE now is pretty limited. I think he's going to retire in the near future. And then it said, will a new challenger step up, like Rob Van Dam? I don't think they're going to have Rob Van Dam challenge for the title so soon. Um, my money's on Dan O'Brien challenging for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. And... I can easily see Brian defeating Cena somehow, maybe with, from interference or something, and then Randy Orton cashing in on Daniel Bryan to continue their feud at SummerSlam. After Brian wins at SummerSlam, then the two will feud for a while, because they've been feuding for a few weeks, and then that was leading up to the money in the bank match and Brian lost, so I think they could resume Orton Brian's feud if Orton were to cash in on Daniel Bryan. Number three, it says, How will Dolph Ziggler recover from two disappointments at Money in the Bank? two disappointments. I know he lost in the match, I guess it meant, like, AJ? Like, it was AJ cost in the match, and I think the two are going to break up tonight. I thought they were going to break up a couple weeks ago, but they have not, so I think this gives Dolph Ziggler an excuse to break up with AJ, and then Dolph could feud with Biggie Langston. If, if not, I think he's going to get a rematch for the World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam, and I think he's going to win the title at SummerSlam. Number four. Will CM Punk try and make Paul Heyman go to sleep? I think that meant, I read the preview for Raw this morning, that means, like, is Punk going to attack Paul Heyman? Is he going to fight him? Is he going to, what's Punk going to do? In response to Paul Heyman turning on CM Punk last night in the Money in the Bank match, crossing CM Punk the match. Um, as I said in part one of this Raw video, I don't think that Brock Lesnar is going to be on Raw tonight. As I said, the, Brock Lesnar is on a limited time deal or a contract with WWE, so they're trying to use his appearances conservatively. Uh, because I, I heard they want to use him at WrestleMania, Brock Lesnar, and a rumored main event for WrestleMania 30 is Brock Lesnar versus The Rock, or Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. I think Brock versus Rock is more likely because Undertaker is really, really just... I think Undertaker's going to be retiring in the very near future. I mean, th nobody thought... Well, I don't want to say nobody thought, but he wasn't even supposed to wrestle this year at WrestleMania, and he managed to do that. I think Undertaker should step away. I really like him. I like the streak, but I think just by sticking around too long, he's going to end up like Hulk Hogan and tarnish his legacy. So, uh, I think Punk will, will either face Axel, or, or Kurt, that is Curtis Axel, the Intercontinental Champion, or there's definitely some sort of segment where Punk talks about it. He'll call out Paul Heyman. Maybe they'll interact, but I don't think we'll see Brock Lesnar just yet. But I do think we'll see Brock Lesnar and CM Punk Clyde in a match at SummerSlam. Lastly, the Wyatt family is, makes their second appearance on Monday Night Raw tonight. Last week they attacked Kane. Kane was taken out of the Money in the Bank ladder match last night because of his so-called injuries from the Wyatt family attack. What will the Wyatt family do tonight? And the preview says, will the Wyatt family provide answers for their assault on Kane? Um, I think Bray Wyatt's going to cut some sort of promo where, where he talks about it, like why he attacked Kane. 
maybe uh, maybe they attack somebody else and they just go like they are booked like the shield where they're, they're just attacking random people uh, I think two possibilities are having Kane return whenever he does and fight the Y family or he could even join the Y family that'd be interesting even though I think it would take some of the spotlight off of the Y family themselves like I, I don't know I don't know what will happen there uh, so I'm gonna be watching Raw tonight at least the first part of it Usually I'll wind up watching Burn Notice with my family because that's what they want to watch and they got to compromise. So I'll watch like the first hour overall and then I'll watch Burn Notice. And usually like the first the first and third hour overall is the is the most important. Usually the second hour is filled with a lot of recap stuff, a lot of filler segments, a lot of like matches that aren't really important. Usually the first hour like sets up the third hour, which is the main event, and the first hour usually has the more important segments. So. Um, I don't, I think they'll kick off the show, I don't know, they, 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 could, they could do any other things, I think they'll kick off the show maybe, with, probably with Randy Orton talking, either Randy Orton talking about his Money in the Bank victory, or John Cena talking, I, maybe, I don't know, I think they're definitely going to focus on the WWE Championship tonight, because, um, the actual 5, five one PV for all also said, like, what's John Cena going to do with his most dangerous enemy now holding the Money in the Bank briefcase, and Orton said that he's not going to announce when he cashes in, he's just going to cash in. So, if Orton cashes in successfully, that will make him a 10-time champion, which I find pretty interesting. I mean, it's pretty it's a pretty big feat, feat to be, or uh, accomplish, accomplishment to be champion 10 times in WWE. So as I said, this match, and going back to my universe mode, is for number contendership for the Intercontinental Championship held by Dan O'Brien. This match, I mean, that's the story of this match, but I didn't do any cutscenes for this match. I just wanted this match to be about the wrestling and about the championship. So, I let the CPU play this one out because I didn't have a storyline or an animation attached to it. So, I, that, that makes it more fair in my opinion. I mean, I wanted, I don't, I don't know. I wanted Damian Sando to win, but I wouldn't have been upset if Kofi Kingston won. Because Kofi, I like him, I just don't think he's being used properly on WWE, just he goes back and forth between between being a um, like a jobber, a mid-card champion, and sometimes they'll hint at him being a main eventer, but they haven't really pulled the trigger on that, and I don't know if they ever will now. Maybe he's stuck being a mid-carder. So I think two possibilities of Damian Sandow being Mr. Money in the Bank are either that he'll feud with Cody Rhodes for a while and kind of build himself up that way, and then he'll cash in Money in the Bank probably when Z Ziggler wins the title, or um, I think they could have... I, I definitely think Rhodes and Sandow are going to feud. That's definite for me, because Sandow um, cost Rhodes the, the Money in the Bank match, basically, and w went on to win it for himself. When they're supposed to be attacking, they're, they're supposed to be best friends. I think Cody Rhodes is going to turn face here. They're not going to turn Damian Sandow face. So, either Damon Sandow builds himself up, or the WWE builds Sandow up by feuding with Rhodes for a while, or Sandow and Rhodes feud for a while, but and then they have a match, at, maybe at SummerSlam, maybe at another pay-per-view, where the Money in the Bank briefcase is on the line, and Rhodes wins, becoming Mr. Money in the Bank. I think those are the two most likely possibilities. I'd prefer, I don't know, I don't want Cody Rhodes to turn face. Like, I don't want him to be a face champion, I've always thought he was a great heel. Heel. A great young heel for SmackDown. I think they should have started pushing him a long while ago. Well, maybe not a long while ago. I think he should have won Money in the Bank last year. So now Kofi hit a trouble in Paradise like a minute ago, and now he's dominating this match. But it's a very back and forth, close, closely fought match. Russian leg sweep by Kofi Kingston. So I'm planning on after the first pay-per-view for Raw and the first pay-per-view for WCW to have the two shows start to go to war, basically, to start to fight. I mean, that's the whole premise of this universe mode. I'm using the Raw is War arena because it's the Monday Night Wars with Raw and WCW all, all over again, except WCW has Ring of Honor and TNA stars. And that's independent stars in general. Kofi with a roll-up, and Damian counters with another roll-up. That's two, no. And Kofi counters. One, two. Oh, no, lights went out. One, two. Kofi counters. One, two. Back and forth here. Damien counters. One, two. Kofi counters. One, 
two. I thought this was a glitch for a second. They kept going back and forth. That's one. That's two. Almost Damian Sando won the match and got a title shot for the Intercontinental Championship. But both guys are hurting here, holding their heads. Definitely sustained a lot of damage throughout this match, but now Kofi's the one that's worse for wear there. Damian throws him and right into the stairs. That's not going to feel too good for on the knees or for anything, because then you go f Kofi went flying over the step and hit the hard floor. And I thought this was going to be one of those glitches. I mean, I've seen this game is full of glitches, unfortunately. Um, in WWE 2K14 news, the Ultimate Warrior is confirmed for WWE 2K14. I really hope WWE 2K14 has some sort of mode that's like Universe Mode. That's the only reason I play the game. I mean, I'm a huge wrestling fan, but the Universe Mode is the only reason I get the games. And I can push who I want to, and I can have the champions be who I want to. That's the, that's the only reason I've gotten WWE 12 and WWE 2K14. Well... WWE 13 and hopefully 2K14. I mean, even if, even if it's not exactly universe mode, it's something like that. Like, um, as far as I know, 2K14 is going to be pretty similar to WWE 13. It's the same developer team, so I don't think the game will be too different, at least this year. I think next year it's going to be really different. It's going to be more like the NBA 2K games we're used to. So, as I said, I'm getting the HGP Vero 2. I'll say no, as I said, no earlier than Wednesday, no, probably no later than Friday. Very excited for that. That's going to make my videos instantly better. Hopefully it has a better editing, editing program, because I really don't like the Roxo editing program, because I can't really trim down the middle of videos, so I'm just stuck starting or ending videos earlier and late, later and earlier, respectively. Starting videos later and ending them earlier. So, Sandile hits his finisher. One, two... Three, Damian Santa will face Dan O'Brien next. Well, let me know, guys, next week or at the Extreme Rules pay per view. Do you want to see Dan, Dan O'Brien defend his title against Damian Sandow at the pay per view or next week on Raw? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned.